Welcome! In this video I'll show you Alex Mini's DAW integration features for Cubase and Nuendo. Nectar DAW integration lets you do a lot more than just control transport functions. You can change tracks, navigate projects, open windows and even control VST instruments directly from the hardware. Internal Cubase instruments are pre-mapped according to Alex Mini's screen printing, so you can take control right away. We'll also look at assigning and controlling third-party plugins and how to assign drum sounds to the pads. And now, without any further ado, let's take control of Cubase. Please make sure that you have installed the Nectar DAW integration software for Cubase on your computer. You'll find it in your Nectar user account when you register Alex Mini. The download also includes a user guide that covers all setup steps. Let's start with the transport features. You can control 20 DAW functions from Alex Mini's transport bar without reaching for the mouse. There's three layers of functionality. When shift is off, the buttons control transport functions according to their labels. You can activate the click, rewind or forward in one bar steps, switch the cycle on and off, and of course control play, stop and record. If you activate shift, it lights up blue and the features printed in blue above the buttons are active. You can open or close the mixer window with S1, instrument plugin windows with S2 if an instrument is assigned to the selected track, otherwise nothing will happen, and the channel strip window with S3. The second row is now assigned to track and patch selection. Track up and track down navigate through your tracks and patch up and patch down, step through an instrument's VST presets. This works right away for internal Cubase plugin instruments. Third-party plugins only work if they support VST patch changes and the patches appear in Cubase's instrument header. You won't be able to browse a plugin's internal library. If you press transport buttons while holding Shift, you get access to a third level of functions. For the top row, they're printed in white next to the buttons. Undo will undo your last edit. You can also set left and right locators and jump to their positions. First, navigate to the desired position with rewind or forward. Now press and hold shift and track up to set the left locator, then forward to your endpoint and use shift and track down to set the right locator. Use cycle to switch the cycle mode between your locators on and off. Now hold shift and press rewind or shift and forward to move the playback cursor to the start or end of your cycle. You can also switch auto quantize on and off by holding shift and pressing record. The play button currently doesn't have a function assigned on this level. The big pod on the left always controls volume of your selected track or when you hold shift the master volume. Now let's tweak a sound from the hardware and make it our own. Activate Shift, select an instrument track with Track Up or Down and open the plugin view with S2. I'll pick the Cubase Retrolog synth to show you some standard factory assignments. Press Page to select the default page, indicated by the blue LED. On this page you'll find our factory mappings. For pre map plugins, the screen printing on Alex Mini is a guide for the assignments. For Retrolog we have mapped Oscillator 2 Fine Tune, Oscillator 1 Level, Oscillator Mod 1 controls Oscillator Type, Oscillator Mod 2 switches Oscillator 1's waveforms, Cutoff, Resonance, Envelope Amount and the LFO knob is assigned to LFO 1 Frequency. You might notice that parameters not always react immediately when you move a control. This is to avoid parameter jumps. We call that soft takeover. Values only change once you pick them up at the currently set value. Let's pick up cutoff to show you how it works. As you can see, the cutoff software control is at maximum, but the knob on LX Mini is at the center position, so they don't match. When you touch a knob, the two LEDs below the large pot update to show you the current soft takeover status. If the right LED shines red, 
you need to move the pot right until both LEDs light up green to pick the value up. If you now turn the pot again, cutoff follows. Let's try the next control. Now the left LED is red, so I have to move the pot down until it turns green. You pick a value up by moving the control until you pass the currently set value. If you'd like to control a synth but there doesn't seem to be anything assigned or you don't like the mapping, no worries, we'll simply create our own in the next chapter. Assigning controls, changing existing or even creating your own maps is really easy. Let me show you how that works with our unique grab function. First, make sure instrument mode is selected. I use Steinberg's Spectre for this, an unusual synth with spectrum filters. Assigning parameters to the knobs will open up completely different ways of working with a synth, and it only takes a minute. You can choose between temporary and permanent assignments. 16 parameters can be assigned in total, 8 to Alex Mini's default page and 8 to the user page. You toggle between them by pressing the page button. If you don't want to change an existing map, select the user page, indicated by the white LED. But in the case of Spectre, we'll go for it and assign all 16 parameters. To assign a parameter for control from the hardware, press and hold Shift while moving the software parameter you want to map in the open plugin UI. Release shift and move the hardware control you want to assign. That's it. I just assigned pitch cause to Alex Mini's pot 1. Now I'll assign the second knob labeled oscillator level to Spectre's AB morph. Oscillator mod 1 will be assigned to filter curve 1. Oscillator mod 2 to filter curve 2. Cutoff and resonance are assigned to cut 1 and cut 2. Envelope amount will be used to control detune. And I have already assigned LFO to control LFO speed, as you can see here. Let's switch to the user page now. Now I'll use the 8 knobs to control 2 of Spectre's 4 envelopes. Let me select the envelope tab on Spectre. Now I click on envelope 1 to select it, hold shift on LX Mini and keep holding shift while moving all four parameters in a row with a mouse. Now I let go and move the knobs in LX Mini's first row. Done. I've just assigned the complete envelope in one step. Now I select envelope 2 and repeat the steps with the knobs in the second row. That's it. Mapping done. But it is still temporary. It'll remain active for as long as Cubase is open, even when you load another song. But if you quit Cubase now, our mapping would be lost. Let's save it quickly by pressing Shift twice, like so. Now the saved map will be recalled every time you create an instrument track with this plugin instrument. Please note that some parameters in Spectre, such as Oscillator Wave and Raster, cannot be assigned in this plugin. What parameters are exposed for external control is up to the developer. There are also some plugins that only give access to macros or need special setup. So should something not work as expected, this could be why. Alright, let's pick another patch and try the map. I'll choose Armory to show you how easy it is to make a sound your own. Let's switch to the default page and change some oscillator and filter settings around. Now I'll switch back to the user page and tweak the first envelope. On this patch envelope 2 isn't used, so let me quickly assign it to modulate detune. Here we go. Let's bring sustain down and dial in a short decay time. Ok, normally I'd spend a bit more time on this, but this is quite usable already. It's just so much more intuitive when you can tweak multiple parameters at the same time. Using LX Mini's pad maps 1 and 2, you're able to play many drum instruments straight away. But you might want to change the pad assignment to better suit your needs. Here's how. Press Shift and Internal to activate setup mode. Press E1 on your keyboard to select Pad Learn. Now choose a pad by hitting it once and pick the sound you want to assign by playing the key on the keyboard. 
Hit the next pad and repeat the steps to assign more sounds. When done, exit pad learn mode by pressing either internal, instrument or function. Now you can play the assigned sounds on the pads. Your assignments are retained in memory until you change them or load another pad map. If you'd like to store your assignment in one of Alex Mini's for pad maps, hold shift and press internal to activate setup mode. Next, press F1 on the keyboard to select save pad map. Now the lower pad row lights up in four different colors, one for each pad map. Press the pad you want to save your pad map to. It starts blinking. Press C3 enter to save the pad map and exit setup. To load a pad map, simply hold down internal, then press one of the four pads labeled pad map. The pad's color will change according to the selected map. The pad maps are a great way to have instant access to up to 32 node assignments. Alright, that's all for now. We hope this overview was helpful. Thanks for watching.